This telecast is available on ABC HD, presented by DLP HD TV. Well, you know, we saw Texas against Texas Tech do a bloop kick that they recovered. And uh, I, if I'm AM, and and AM has their guys back a little bit, but now they're starting to scoot up. Yeah. Because uh, you're talking about the high spinner mm -hmm. that comes down somewhere between the 25 and the 30 yard. Yeah, because even if they recover it, it's about where you get it on a kickoff return. Yeah. yeah. So let's see what Hunter Lawrence comes up with here. You try to land it right somewhere in there. Well, actually, he kicks it away. Backing up at the five yard line, it's Kerry Franks. Franks with good blocking is going to bring it all the way back out across the 40 yard line. Eddie Jones on the special teams, number 32, making the tackle. And now, but the Aggies got to work on seven minutes and 28 seconds to get off the clock. Take a look at that touchdown again. It was such a nice job. Watch Jordan Shipley on top. He's going to take off on his route. He's being guarded by Arkeith Brown. And as he goes to make the move to the inside, Brown spins around and faces in. And watch Shipley break it back to the outside. Now the key, watch McCoy. It actually timed out perfect that he slid over to the right. And he could not have thrown a better ball to his roommate. Well, the ball is pitched out. And as soon as the pitch is made, Goodson is tackled by Eric Jackson. And it looks as though Gibson is shaken up on the play. Yeah, he went down. It's like he may have landed on his hip. Well, it's nice to see that they've gotten Mike Goodson involved. You know, we did a game earlier in the year where he was suspended for the first half uh, against Texas Tech, and it really hurt AM that he was not in that ball. a difference maker. I mean, there's, because, you know, some people have said that this football team has not recruited as much speed as they should have. Well, I mean, conversely, this young guy, yeah, you put him in space, and there's no defensive coordinator in this conference or any other that wants to have to defend him. Well, he is, he's exceptional. Yeah. Quite a hit from Stephen McGee. Okay, John, are all precincts reporting, or is it final yet? They have not reported. They have not even called in. Peyton Hillis, his fourth touchdown of the game, two through the air, two on the ground. They have to go for the two-point conversion. Felix Jones takes it and bursts his way into the end zone. And so it's 50 to 42. Ellis Jew on the 10. Ooh, John. I think. All precincts are about to report here <laughs> shortly. Well, you, it's like scoring twice because you got to score right. and then two point conversion. That's exactly right. And the, the, this is a, the toughest one because you've got to do it after you've already been bested. Well, we have gone under six minutes to play. And as you can see, a delay of game. Oh, Well, and, and Texas A&M not doing themselves any favors. We showed you the graphic a minute ago that, that Texas this year and for the last few years has been an amazing fourth quarter team. And uh, Goodson went out of bounds on the first run, uh -huh. so he stopped the clock. And then the sack by McGee backed them up. And now a penalty and field position is, is starting to look bad for A&M with Texas uh, on a little bit of a roll offensively. Even though Texas has had a couple of big plays in the ballgame, time of possession is headed to almost a 40 20 differential. Well, if we're not really hearing referee Cleet Blakeman's microphone has shorted out, so he has to go over to Coach Franchoni and tell him what's going on. I know John's going to call us soon. Testing. Timekeeper, please put five minutes and 50 seconds on the game clock. The clock will start on the snap. And <laughs> you think three seconds doesn't matter? Hey. <laughs> Believe me. Did you see the crawl that just came across? We'll I get it officially from John. Arkansas has just defeated LSU in Baton Rouge in three overtime. There's plenty of happy people in Kansas, West Virginia, Missouri, Ohio State. All those teams right back, all of them in the conversation for the BCS championship game. So on third down and many. About 19, a very long count as he's running down every second 
of that game clock that he can. And McGee will turn and hand it off to Link. And John Saunders, we understand now all precincts are reporting. They are indeed. LSU got the touchdown, but here's the two-point conversion. Matt Flynn going to the back of the end zone. Richardson steps in front of it, just like against Kentucky. LSU's losses have come into overtime by failure to get the two-point conversion in the third OT. But number one goes down. Wow. John, thanks so much. Great job of keeping us on top of that. Man, man, man. I mean, there are 93,000 disappointed uh, folks down in uh, down in Baton Rouge and a, and a handful of folks wearing the the Arkansas Razorback colors that are very excited. Well, the kick is not that long. There's not going to be any return. And we're going to hold it right here as they say out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Ron Franklin Ed Cunningham Jack Aruth coming to you from Kyle Field in College Station Texas. For the annual bash between the Aggies and the Longhorns. And now the Longhorns get the football back and they score and cut it to a seven point game. And for those of you who just joined us from that Arkansas LSU game, all of a sudden we've got a little bit of a ball game. Texas went right down the field and scored on their last possession and got a turnover on downs to get the ball back quickly. They're trying to hook up with Charles and the flag goes down. They're going to call pass interference on. Texas A&M and it looks as though Kenny Brown is a redshirt freshman out of Putnam City High School in uh, in Oklahoma City. Yeah Kenny Brown was running stride for stride with Jamal Charles but he was beat he was bumping him. Pass interference on the defense number 15. The 15 yard penalty automatic first down. Hey Ron we showed a graphic a moment ago about how, te how good Texas is in the fourth quarter. And boy, this thing is starting to feel uh, the momentum is really starting to go Texas's way. They're starting to get the calls that they weren't getting in the third quarter. Uh, they're starting to make some plays. McCoy looks very comfortable and confident moving around in the pocket. And I know Dennis Franchoni is unhappy about that call, but this momentum feels like it's going towards Texas. McCoy deep over the middle in and out of the hands and Finley for some reason was distracted. First it hit him in the hands. Then in the midsection and then just popped right out. Well, and that is two drop passes. And you don't see that very much. Billy Pittman dropped one earlier on a key third down, and Finley, usually very sure handed, this ball hit him right in the hands and he wasn't able to bring it in. Actually let it get into his pads. Yeah, and you sure see that did. all the time. It hits sure that did. hits that breastplate and bounces right out. So it is second down and ten. 440 left in the ball game. Quick pass tipped and almost intercepted by our Keith Brown. And I think that would have been the old expression, a pick six. <laughs> and probably lights out. Yes. Nice break on the ball by our Keith Brown. McCoy stayed on that side a little too long. And Brown, who got beat by Shipley for the touchdown before, made a great break on the ball. What do they say about cornerbacks in their short-term memory? <laughs> you don't want short-term memory. When you play that position. So here comes third down. McCoy runs out of the pocket, drills the pass, and it is incomplete. As Shipley was the intended receiver. Well, I think I, you know you're 14 down, 4:30 left. I, I think you may have to go for it here. I, I really do, and, and I think this is the right decision. Here's your ball game right here, fourth down, and. Uh, this is a humongous play when you think about it for Texas. They're looking at a BCS at large and possibly going to the Big 12 South. This could be all of that on this play. So it's fourth down. Obanaya checks into the ball game at tailback. Four and a half minutes left. McCoy going to run at the 45, at the 40, hit from behind, and he'll have the first down plus about 20 yards. Tackled by Vaughn Miller. Remember the Oklahoma State game Texas is going down to try to kick the field goal to win the game Colt McCoy took off on a third and 11 ran 14 yards and made the conversion now on fourth down he goes 26 yards he has completely uh, gained a lot of confidence as a runner McCoy going for the end zone and it is incomplete last man to touch it was Marquise Carpenter. 
Jordan Shipley again the intended receiver over on that right side. Well you can't say enough about that run by McCoy though. 26 yards and, and it looked like guys had some angles on him. He did a good job of getting away from them by breaking off to the left. Kellen Hurd number 91 comes in at defensive tackle for the Aggies and he has been a thorn in the side of McCoy and the Texas passing game. They set up a screen. It is complete and it's Jamal Charles and it's going to be Kellen Hurd the man I was just talking about who reacted away from the screen and still wound up going downfield to make the tackle and I think Jamal Charles landed. I think they landed funny on that same ankle Charles hurt against Texas Tech. I think that Hurd landed right on the back of his foot. And I believe Texas just took a timeout but boy this would be a huge loss if you're trying to come back and that was Hurd who tangled up his leg. So we'll take a timeout 358 left in the ball game a and 38 24. So we are back at Kyle Field in College Station Texas Aggies on top by 14 but the Longhorns with a third down and about seven and a half yards eight to pick up the first can be right back in this thing if they score fairly quickly. McCoy under heavy pressure resets and he's going to run it and will spin inside the 25 to the 23. Now he is within a breath of picking up the first down again Kellen Hurd with a great pass rush and Hurd is down uh, on about the 26 yard line. Actually a couple of Aggies are down. Looks like Alton Dixon mm -hmm. and Kellen Hurd are both. Alton the uh, strong safety and of course uh, Hurd the young man that we talked about. It, it was the move by McCoy right at the very end and I believe Dixon and Kellen Hurd ran into each other. It looked like they were both going to have blow up shots on McCoy but McCoy has gotten so much better making people miss. He's just his confident ha confidence has grown so much in the run game but watch the very end of the run this little movie cuts back towards the middle and it, he's just starting to get a sense of where people are coming from that little cut and you see helmet to helmet. Oh, wow. oh man that's yeah yeah that's that's pretty bad. Now I did see Kellen Hurd who is now sitting up moving and let's hope that both of these players end up coming off the field under their own power because well, that's was. a pretty bad hit. Headgear to headgear and you got to consider that Hurd is 331 pounds and Alton Dixon is only 196. Well they are both moving under their power but Alton Dixon looked like he was knocked out that that behavior body language tells me there he was knocked out quickly our ESPNU all state standings review let's take a look. Well we can make some adjustments already can't we. Yeah I think so. Yeah. Unbelievable. And so now how about this matchup tomorrow West Virginia now back in it and unbelievably Ohio State whose season's been over now for a week back in the conversation because LSU of course will drop below all of those teams come Sunday. So they measure and as we said Texas was going to be just a whisper from the first down and you can see where the point of the football is. I mean it's just inches. <laughs> and here's the question. I, I know you've got to get the first down to stay alive but you need two scores with 349. <laughs> uh, if I'm Texas A&M and, and you got two receivers to the top for uh, for Texas uh, I'm not so sure this is a running play. They may try to get one here on a fade round. Well they go with a quarterback sneak. So McCoy keeps it to pay making the tackle. Well, you know and, and as time starts to wear down in this game remember Michael Bennett the fine defensive end for Texas A&M who went out with a hamstring injury and now you get Kellen Hurd who's played unbelievably well out. So now the pass rush for Texas A&M may have to start coming from blitzes because they're so short on defensive linemen. Yep you're right. Ninth play of the drive and they sharp a blitz and they swing it out. And the pass caught and stepping out of bounds at around the 15 is Obanaya. And you're kind of stuck in that that clock part where if you're Texas and you do score 
you're right in that space where do you have to do an onside or not? It kind of depends on how much more clock they eat if they are able to score. But you're going to get into that position, and you've already used one timeout where you may have no other choice but to try an onside kick. Blitz coming off the bottom. Quick pass caught at the five, and a move will take it to the three yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Texas Longhorns. Cosby, Quan Cosby makes the catch. Boy, that was a, an excellent job of quarterback and receiver. The blitzer came off Cosby, so all the receiver and the quarterback did was said, you're not covered, get it to you very quickly. That was just a really smart play between Good Cosby catch. and yep. McCoy to see that blitz and get it over. Clock is running. They did not use a timeout. From the shotgun, McCoy going to run. Well, thanks better of it. Now looking, still looking. And he will fall down at the three yard line. Boy, he burned a lot of time. Yeah. You better call the timeout quickly. Well, I, I think you're right, but they're going to keep it going. Uh, <laughs> and now your quarterback's really tired. It, uh, you know, not just to save clock, but I think you need to let your quarterback catch his breath. Well, we're now under three minutes. Obanaya to the right side gets hung up with his own blockers. Uh, did his knee go down? No. Touchdown, Texas. Obanaya in the game because Jamal Charles had his leg injured on his last run. And Obanaya, who had been getting pointers from Jamal Charles all summer on how to run, shows great balance. He could have gone down, but he put that left arm down. Boy, that is good goal line running by Obanaya to keep his balance. Extra point hits the upright. Texas misses the extra point. Well, and I think that Texas has to do an onside kick. I, I just, you know, with, with two timeouts, the offense, if they don't pick up a first down, can run off about a minute, minute 15. And now you're in a situation, Texas, where the win. You're going to have to, again, score twice, touchdown and a two-point conversion because of the missed extra point. Well, in this season, that old football has taken some strange bounces, hasn't it? Especially around this conference. I'm telling you. Yeah. So Bailey, of all things, misses an extra point. And I was just about to ask you, what what would be wrong with strategy of going for two because if you hit it and then you're fortunate enough to get back to the end zone then you kick an extra point maybe to win. Yeah. Well you, you, a lot of people think go for two if you're on the road for yeah. the win and you're saying do it one before you yeah, have to. Yeah. Exactly. Not but a it, bad not a bad theory at all. Then onside kicks Longhorns one for one and Texas A&M. First kick was uh, defended. And that one for one was the game we saw against Texas Tech. It was actually a bloop. Yeah. Uh, but now, and boy, Texas A&M is not up. And, and this surprises me with these guys back here. You don't have more people up around here. Boy, this really plays towards Texas, if you ask me. Well, here it is, that same kick you were talking about. Bearcat signal for very, very wisely and made. So 38 30 our score Aggies with the football 55 they have listed on their roster is Danny Baker but it's Chavis now it's Chavis it's yeah been, it's been changed. Yeah, they changed the number so that's a linebacker Chavis and that that's an excellent job of course you study that tape you, you if you're Texas A&M you studied that tape and now with 244 if A&M doesn't pick up a first down Texas can get the ball back it's it's still it is a very nice move on the part of the linebacker. You look at his uh, Texas offensive lineman. Breathing heavy, but they'd like to get back out on the field to stay in this ball game. And this young man wants first downs and wants that clock to run. It'll be McGee spinning for a couple. Norton makes the tackle. And because you only have two timeouts, a lot of teams will do this, not take it on the first down. Because if, if Texas A&M goes and gets a first down on this play, you burnt one. 
Okay, the 25 second clock was just whistled in. So it's going to be down around two minutes and five seconds, I believe, before they have to snap the football. And, and again, if Texas is able to get a stop, they should have some time left, but you won't have any time out. So then you're in a tough situation if you don't field position. Down to two, and they snap it with 2.01 on the game clock. And Lane is going to be stopped after a gain of a couple and look for the Texas timeout here. And it is called. So we'll be back in just a moment. 155 left in the ball game, but a huge third down coming up for the Aggies. We'll be right back. So here's the situation. Aggies with the ball on the third down. They need to take it out to the 43-yard line. Texas has only one timeout remaining. Keep an eye on number three, Mike Goodson. And they give it to Goodson, being trailed, gets by a tackle, turns the corner, and he just picked up the first down. I mean, by just inches, but he just picked up the first down. Wow, what an unbelievable play by Mike Goodson. And at a minute 48, and Texas with one timeout, if he does in fact have the first down, yep, they're going to measure. If they they should be able to run out the clock. Texas A&M should be able to run out the clock without picking up a first down. And to put into perspective how big this first down is, Dennis Franchoni's future obviously in doubt. Texas sitting on the cusp of a big 12 possible shot at a Big 12 championship game and also a BCS at large could be going. There's the first down right there. And a man standing closest to it. Dennis Franchione. Boy, it, and, and Texas had this defended. That's Brian Arakpo, and you just, what a move by Goodson. You know, we've, we've seen this team a couple of times this year, and you've got to think, no matter what happens during the offseason, no matter when, when Texas A&M comes back on the field next year, number three better be a featured guy. He is an absolute difference. Yeah, he, he really is. Uh, and in fact, <laughs> go back to that game that where he was suspended for the first half, you know, I thought that could that Against change Texas that Tech. football game mm -hmm. up tremendously. Absolutely. Thomas in motion. Going to go straight ahead with the running play. Was it, was it Texas Tech or was it the Oklahoma? I believe it was Texas Tech because they they fumbled. Remember, uh, okay. DeAndre Smith fumbled. And, but boy, for, for Dennis Franchoni, and of course, the, the rumors have swirled that there was a buyout in place. And uh, we saw earlier having fun with his players. His players played very loose today. Yeah. And they really, and, and you know, you, you would think they may come out and play tight, but boy, did they play loose. Almost as if they knew something before this football game. Well, and they have a lot of respect and like for Dennis Franchoni. So no matter what happens, all of these young men can be so very proud of what they did in this humongous rivalry. So with second down and nine and the clock now with 37 36 seconds there's Lane on the carry and Lane will be stopped short of the 50 yard line by Griffin and the last time out has just been called by Texas with 28 ticks on the clock. But today's Chevrolet players of the game are Jamal Charles for Texas all purpose 173 yards and for Stephen McGee of Texas A&M. Three touchdown passes and a career high, 362 passing yards. And in recognition of their effort, Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, if you think that this is over in the Big 12 South, it is not. There is still a scenario where Texas could end up. It's a bit of a long shot, but if Oklahoma were to lose to Oklahoma State, tomorrow you'd have a three-way tie in the Big 12 South. Three losses amongst Oklahoma, Texas, and Oklahoma State. They'd go through the tiebreaker, believe it or not, would land on the final uh, Sunday BCS ranking, which, of course, Oklahoma at 10 right now and Texas at 13. You would expect Oklahoma to be higher, but the Big 12 South is still not over if, uh, with this loss for Texas. Yeah, I, with this performance today, I'm not sure Texas is going to even stay where they are. No, I, I, I think that, I think they'll drop a spot or two. I agree. I'm trying to give them a little bit of hope, <laughs> but I'm with you. Yeah. 29 ticks showing on the clock. 
third down but that's not the most important thing for the Aggies you see Stephen McGee he's just going to fall down on the football and now 24 seconds they don't even have to run a play the 25 second clock does not need to be started the Texas A&M Aggies are going to upset the Texas Longhorns and beat them two years in a row final this game is going to be A&M 38 to 30 they came out strong they came